Okay, so year two at the new school, last week of August, not sleeping more than a couple hours a night. I don't want to take the sleeping pills. I was overseeing student activities as well as the vice principal and teaching a class. And uh, I remember it was Tuesday of the second week of classes. And uh, so the students had been at school for a week and I was working with the student council kids and we had a dance planned for that Thursday, the welcome back dance. And my mind was just in a state of anxiety and panic for that dance that it's, it's not gonna work and all sorts of things are gonna go wrong. And again, anxiety and depression don't make sense. Like I'd help students run dances. I ran dances when I was in high school. There's no reason I should be having stress or anxiety about this dance. But that's where my mind was on that, that Tuesday. And um, I went to see my psychologist and uh, I, I, I was shaking and sweating. Um, at that time, driving to work, because I was sleeping so little, I was afraid I was gonna fall asleep at the wheel and crash driving in the morning. So I'd have the windows cranked down and the uh, radio blasted all the way there so I could stay awake. Uh, when I went to see the, uh, the psychologist, um, and we chatted, I was wrapped up in a blanket uh, and I chose the couch this time, uh, wrapped up in a blanket and I'd go from sweating to freezing and back to sweating and freezing. And uh, he talked with me a bit and uh, helped me get my, my brain under control enough that I was able to go back to work. And um, by Thursday, uh, the day of the dance, my head was just, just a state of panic about this dance. And um, my sister called me and she said, uh, uh, dad had been sick earlier in the week. He had uh, gone to the hospital, been checked, and uh, they had just checked him into uh, to the hospital. Um, he had some pneumonia in his lungs and uh, he was going to be in for a couple of days. And my sister had spent the whole day with dad and asked if I could come and spend the, the evening with him. And um, so I agreed to do that. Um, part of the reason that this was falling on my sister and myself is um, two years prior, my, our mom had passed away and, um, and two years prior to that, we had a sister pass away. So, um, it was up to my sister and myself to, to help support, uh, dad and, um, and my one other sister as well. And, uh, so I went to the hospital and, uh, you know, my dad, a big bear of a man and, and I love my dad. Uh, I can't say I loved him my whole life. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about understanding alcoholism later. Uh, but my dad, a big bear of a man, he, he's going to talk to the doctor and the doctor said, you know, you're going to have to be here for like two to three days to, to get over this um, pneumonia. And uh, my dad says, I can't be in here three goddamn days. I'm going fishing up north with one of my, my nephews. And uh, that was my dad. And, uh, you know, he just, uh, uh, good soul underneath, but a lot of, well, I decided to stay the night with my dad and um, I put two chairs together and you know sleeping beside his bed and a couple times during the night you know dad woke up and sat up and sat on the end of his bed and looked out the hospital window at uh, it was St. Mary's Hospital looking at the downtown Kitchener and just kind of cool looking at him there just sitting up and uh, you know we chat some of those times and then go back to sleep and um, it was very early in the morning I think it was around four o'clock in the morning when the nurses wrestled me from my chair and said Kevin, you need to wake up. Yeah, Kevin, your dad's not breathing. And you know, you've been right in a groggy state. You haven't slept very much and haven't been sleeping very much. And um, so they wake me up and your dad's, dad's not breathing and uh, um, we, we think he's going to pass. And it's like, hold on, what, 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 what do you mean he's going to pass? Like, dad's got pneumonia. He's a big physical active man. He's, he's going fishing in three days. But uh, something had happened and dad just stopped breathing and uh, they, were, they were working on him to try and keep him alive and said, you need to call your sisters. So I called my sisters and I had just finished calling my sisters and my dad just passed. He very quietly stopped breathing and passed away. And uh, it's actually the way dad wanted to go. There's no way he wanted to be sick or be stuck in a goddamn hospital for, for months on end. Um, and I kind of picture him now up in heaven, his version of heaven, in a, a fishing boat somewhere, and uh, mom, mom's in one of the fish, end of the fishing boat. Although she probably would have never gone fishing with dad when 
when he was drinking. But, you know, that's all gone now that they've passed. And mom's up there crocheting and knitting in one end and dad's fishing and they're at a blissful, peaceful place where their, their minds are both at, at rest. So. so my dad passed away on the Thursday night and everything kicks in at that point for um, taking care of the, the funeral and the visitation and my dad had gotten himself a puppy that we need to take care of and uh, his house and his mail and his bank and all that stuff and my sister and I were uh, co-executors so we started working on that and uh, you know we got through all that stuff together as a family and um, after a week uh, when I was supposed to go back to work and you know that one week off that we're allowed and we're expected to go back to work and everybody else is able to go back to work and I wasn't able to go back to work I uh, I I couldn't leave the house I uh, I went for um, to do some of my dad's banking and when I was at the bank I couldn't remember what I was there for and I just had a meltdown and I started to shake and I could feel the tears coming and thank goodness at the bank they're used to helping people through these tough situations tough times and they took me into one of the the back offices and just calmly helped me work through what was going on but from that point on I wouldn't leave the house unless I, unless I was with Valerie there's no way I was going out of the house alone and I couldn't drive I uh, the the weeks up to um, uh, the, the previous uh, year I was worried about driving that uh, my mind was always anxious as I was driving and I wasn't sure I should be driving but, um, I uh, I just remember being so I, I can't leave the house and it was it was I'd get up in the morning and I'd go right back down on the couch I didn't even walk the dog and all I'd want to do is sleep um, I wouldn't watch TV there's no way I was gonna be off work and become a Jerry Springer couch person um, I couldn't read books. I'd read a, a page of a book or a chapter and I couldn't remember the story characters. So that was no good. So basically I just slept and slept and slept. And I remember the lowest I got was, I think I was off for a couple of weeks after dad passed away. And Valerie asked me if I'd emptied the dishwasher before she, uh, she got home at lunch. She came home at lunch for work, from work. And I'm thinking in my head, are you trying to kill me? Are you trying to push me over the edge? You know I can't even get off the couch to walk the dog. And you want me to empty the dishwasher? So that's what a, a depressed, anxious brain does. Valerie and I were high school sweethearts. We started dating in grade 12. We had been married for 25 years and raised three amazing children. And my brain is thinking, she's trying to put me over the edge by asking me to empty the dishwasher. And I felt on the couch like I was in handcuffs and shackles and it was like you were in quicksand that was slowly hardening and you couldn't move and even to get up to go to the bathroom was tough uh, I didn't eat uh, over that first month I lost 20 pounds I wanted to lose 20 pounds uh, but that's not the way to lose the 20 pounds um, no interest in even sitting at the table with Val and the kids I didn't even want to I wasn't interested in what they were doing at school or their sports. All I wanted to do was sleep. So, that's how low it got at the lowest. That's it for now.